It is Thursday, August 27th, 2020, and this is your Three Gorges Dam update. We have four pieces of information to cover today, including Three Gorges Shiplock resumes operations. Also, courtesy of China Daily, rare typhoon to bring rain gales to Liaoning. Next, courtesy of Reuters, grain U.S. soy futures rise on fresh China sale. We also have some new photos and some new footage. Let's hop into it. And a brief caveat before today's video. While researching for these reports, I come across information from various sources. Just because I decide to include a piece of information doesn't necessarily mean that I agree with it. I like to let you decide for yourself. Moving on. And a quick look at the status of the water level at the Three Gorges Dam before we get started. The current water level at the Three Gorges Dam is 164.40 meters. And that's up from yesterday's 163.47 meters and also extremely close to the 165 meter warning level. The current inflow is listed at 32,000 cubic meters per second and the current outflow sits at 33,600 cubic meters per second. It is worth noting that these numbers are released by the CCP. And one last interesting piece of information before we get started. Some of you kind folks were nice enough to point out in the comments that this gentleman James Neal Cooper made a YouTube video the other day titled China's Three Gorges Dam Water Spill Over the Top Part 2. And Mr. Cooper claims to know somebody who was recently at the dam for business purposes. This person claims that while on top of the dam, 10 to 15 centimeters of water was covering the tops of their boots. I'll leave a link in the description so you can decide for yourself. And our first article comes courtesy of China.org. Three Gorges Shiplock Resumes Operations The Three Gorges Shiplock resumed operations on Tuesday after navigation had been suspended for a record 174 hours due to floods. The first ship after the suspension was lifted entered the lock chamber at around 3 p.m. on Tuesday as the outflow of the Three Gorges Reservoir was reduced to 44,500 cubic meters per second at 2 p.m., reaching the navigable standard. At 8 a.m. on August 18th, the flow of the Three Gorges Reservoir reached 57,000 cubic meters per second causing the ship locks and ship lifts to be suspended for the fifth time since flood season began this year. According to the Three Gorges Navigation Authority, to ensure safety during the flood season, the staff were on duty around the clock after the suspension to evacuate ships between the two dams in time. Passenger ships and ferries in the area were completely suspended and escorted by sea patrol boats to berth in safe waters. Relevant departments used the suspension period to maintain the ship locks and ship lifts, increase the publicity of hydrological information and safety warnings, and ensure the safety of ships waiting to pass the locks. And this comes courtesy of China Daily, rare typhoon to bring rains, gales to Liaoning. Typhoon Bavi may land in Liaoning province on Thursday, bringing gales and torrential rains to the area after forming on Saturday and subsequently accelerating north, the National Meteorological Center said. The center predicted that Bavi will land between Liaoning Zhuanghe City and the North Pyongan province of the Democratic People's Republic of Korea on Thursday morning. Winds up to 136 kilometers per hour and heavy rainfall are expected to strike Liaoning and parts of Shandong, Jilin, and Heilongjiang provinces through Thursday night. On Wednesday, the center issued a red alert for the storm the highest of the four-tier warning system. Under the guidance of the Ministry of Transport, the Liaoning government has started to evacuate ship crews and has suspended all ferry, railway, and highway services that will be affected by the typhoon. On Wednesday, Dalian International Airport in Liaoning canceled 32 flights due to weather risks. 
Interprovincial Passenger Ship Services along the Bohai Strait between Shandong and Liaoning were suspended on Wednesday afternoon, a local newspaper reported. The sustained rainfall that has been affecting Liaoning since Sunday will exacerbate the situation and cause geological disasters such as landslides, urban flooding, and debris flow, the provincial government said. Xinyang, the provincial capital, announced that starting on Wednesday afternoon, night fairs and outdoor tourist spots would be suspended, and schools and nursing homes would be shut down temporarily. After making landfall, Bavi will subside and move through the northeastern provinces, the National Meteorological Center said. If Bavi makes landfall in Liaoning at the predicted strength, it will be the most powerful of the 13 storms that have landed in Liaoning over the past 71 years, said Zhang Wan, a weather analyst at the China Meteorological Administration. Typhoons that arrive in the Yellow Sea tend to move east toward the Korean Peninsula, and it is not easy for them to land in China's northeastern provinces, she said. Thank you for watching this video. If you're finding it informative, please consider giving the channel a subscribe. And this comes courtesy of Reuters, Grains U.S. Soy futures rise on fresh China sale. U.S. soybean futures rose to their highest level in more than seven months on Wednesday. With stepped up demand from China and dry weather threatening to cut Midwest yields, supporting prices for a third day in a row, traders said. Private exporters reported the sale of 400,000 tons of soybeans to China for delivery in the 2020-2021 marketing year, the U.S. Agriculture Department said Wednesday morning. Additionally, hot and dry weather across the Midwest raised concerns about the soybean crop as it nears the end of the key development phase following near-perfect weather throughout planting and early growth stages. The dynamics have shifted, said Dan O'Brien, a risk management specialist and broker at Top Third AG Marketing. You are seeing worse weather and better demand. Chicago Board of Trade soybeans for November delivery settled four cents higher at just over $9.24 a bushel. On a continuous basis, the most active contract hit its highest level since January 21st. And our last piece of information is a series of interesting tweets. And I think that's a good place to wrap up today's video. I hope that you found it informative and check back soon for more content.